is Victor with Programmatic Academy. Today we'll be doing a platform walkthrough through AppNexus. For those of you who are not familiar with AppNexus, AppNexus is one of these um, technology companies that is both an SSP and a DSP. However, since we're discussing programmatic buying, we will be doing um, we'll be doing it from the advertiser side. So we'll be showing you how to set up a buy in AppNexus. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the advertiser uh, tab over here when you log in. And the first thing we're going to do is set up an advertiser. I've already set one up, but let's go through the motions anyway. Now, when you start, uh, and, and if you're an agency, the advertiser may be a client. If you're a client, the advertiser may be just a brand or product within your company. This is all very easy. Select the name. Usually I recommend having some sort of naming convention. Um, and then maintain it as active because what happens if, if you don't keep it as active, it won't show up when we're doing the following steps and uh, it can cause some confusion. Time format, Eastern time, time zone, wherever you may be. And really that's about it uh, that I recommend at least when setting up an advertiser. There's some other um, selections down here, such as default settings. If you have a brand, like I said, if you have a, if you're a client, uh, categories. I've never really set any of these things. Maybe the currency, if you're in a different country other than the United States. Frequency cap. I don't like to put the frequency cap ever at the advertiser level because it restricts us later on in um, certain campaigns and sometimes you just need to adjust it depending on you know how the campaign is performing and what the optimal frequency cap is for that campaign so I avoid setting it up at the advertiser level uh, reporting labels if um, you know I've never done this this sort of thing but um, it's basically to kind of associate a person to this campaign in some sort of way We'll see this um, in other areas as well um, with insertion orders and things like that for the trafficking parts. And then billing information, you know, obviously you want to put in your billing information. And um, this one, since I'm part of a network, it's already um, kind of uh, updated at the, at the uh, central level. So no need to do it here. All right, so I'm going to cancel out of here since I've already saved. It's already set up. Now, I've when I first started using AppNexus, I was a bit confused because there are a ton of different, um, basically, selections, options that you can that you can do, uh, and there's there's not a lot of uh, uniformity across you know programmatic uh, partners. There's there's a lot of similarities, but are not a lot not a lot of uniformity in that a lot of um, times different uh, you know acronyms and different names mean different things. So keep that in mind if you've only ever used one other platform and move over to AppNexus. So the next the next part we want to do is called insertion orders. Okay, so insertion orders are a way to kind of keep track and use if you need to bill um, by insertion order or set up your campaign to, to invoice this way. Anyway, if we click on this insertion order, we will see that I have to click edit in order to see the information. Okay, so again, name test insertion order active very important if you put it in active um, it won't show up at the later stages you'll be very confused now this is something that is um, relatively new to AppNexus it's called verify AppNexus spend protection impressions and essentially what this does is this is a pool of inventory that is pre-verified uh, even before you know you are allowed to bid on it um, right now, it's only available if you're using standard formats, so you can't use this for video. And how this works is essentially, 
if you have a, a verification par partner like Double Verify, uh, Tegra Ad Science, something like that, you would select them here and um, choose them, and then it would be active across all of your following line items and campaigns for this insertion order. We went ahead and just set uh, an example or sample budget of $50 for a few days, set pacing on the line item or campaign level, which we'll be doing um, in the following steps. Again, reporting labels. If a specific trafficker um, put this one up, you can do it here, sales rep, etc. I've never actually used these things, but it, it all depends on how your uh, company is, you know, is set up. Commissions. This is if you want to add the, let's say, the cost of your double verify, uh, you know, CPM or something like that, or a percentage fee, some other tech fee, and it will be added to your, um, essentially, to your invoice, so you can so you can see it at that level. Associated line items, we have one which we uh, created um, already, but you don't have to create it um, before the, the insertion order. You can do it after. And any comments that you may have about this, um, you know, this campaign. So let's cancel out of here. So the next step, and if you notice, one thing about AppNexus that I, I like is that they have a um, kind of a breadcrumb navigation up here to let you know uh, where you're at. So let's go back to the main, uh, main page. We will click on line items, which is where we start getting into a little more detail. And so we had set up a line item over here, which um, we can just click on this button right here and edit. If not, if you're setting it up, obviously click new. And a line, and a, when you create a campaign, a line item can be something like uh, a different country, a different tactic, uh, something like that. So we get the name. External code I've never used. Active. Again, we want to keep it active. And um, currency is already pre-selected. Budget type. We picked that at the uh, previous uh, level of insertion order. Uh, by budget type, I always encourage you to use revenue. That way it's based on um, a dollar value and not on impression value, but I guess it depends on, on the campaign you're using, you're, you're trying to run. If it's some sort of performance campaign, definitely revenue. If uh, for whatever reason you have clients and they want uh, a set number of impressions every day, then maybe use impression, um, but revenue is definitely the way to go. Pacing, we want to set pacing on the campaign level or you can, you know, set it, um, set a daily budget here for this line item. Revenue type again is basically the way you're wanting to bid <clears throat> in this case. So CPM is what we're going to do since that's what gives us the most uh, amount of inventory available. CPC uh, has a lot of limited inventory in AppNexus and CPA even less so. I've run both of these in the past and um, it it's a it's a you know it's a toss-up. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, so I would stick to, to CPM for now. If you have a client and you have agreed to a certain uh, margin, you can put that here. So you put 20%. Otherwise you can just not track it at all and you can run it you know manually to determine um, the uh, the margin you get but it's it takes a lot more uh, hands-on approach if you don't put it here so you got to be looking out for your costs versus what you know um, you're charging 
optimization for this example campaign i set it up as a as a cpc as our goal our kpi okay but you can pick cpa you can pick ctr um so in if we pick cpa we would have to then select a conversion pixel I've, as you see i haven't set one up but here's where you would select that and that way it knows you know where the conversion takes place and how to um how to start optimizing in order for you to reach your your CPA. So we'll leave it as CPC for now. The goal of 50 cents. And we're not tracking conversions. Frequency cap, leave it at, uh, let's say, the standard of three impressions per user per day. Targeting, here's where we can choose um, you know where where we're going to show this this ad desktops and laptops tablets and phones they're all uh, on by default so we can just leave it on like that we can select custom we kind of choose you know um, where it goes as well inventory I believe this tab is for predefined inventory like whitelist or audiences that you may have had in other campaigns yes here's also where we can exclude okay and sorry I have to blur this out but there's some um, you know privacy issues with this that I need to I need to blur out so we can uh, exclude domains we can um, if you also want to choose private deals that you have set in place you can do that here by um, including okay Cancel a lot of there. Key values. Now, key values are uh, something that's also, at least to my memory, I think they're they're relatively new, and this is similar to uh, what would be considered um, some sort of macros for in other um, platforms. But essentially, key value groups is you know you can upload a list of uh, places that you want to be shown you know uh, geographically show the ad so you don't have to set up you know 20 different campaigns uh, things like that okay what devices you want to be on uh, etc there's a lot of options to that and um, you know you can read in the their knowledge base what all the options are because it's definitely a lot to go through in just this uh, short video geography a very simple but super important part of any campaign we already selected uh, the United States system. Now the system here gives us a lot of different options, um, starting with the OS. And if you click on and on any of these, for example, it will give you the um, even more options inside browser. A lot of different browsers, from mobile browsers to desktop browsers. <clears throat> language if you want to choose other than um, you know whatever the default is for the for the country you selected include exclude device model a lot of different options here okay so for example if you want to target Samsung we can choose Samsung's in the device models. And then Carrier is another one. Nextel Orange, a lot of them. So let's say uh, in the US, AT and T. Okay. For some reason, the exclude option is always um, pre selected on any um, one of these pop up boxes where you get to make selections. So be sure to include, to select on include if you want to include. And um, you can pick that, for example, AT&T in the United States. Inventory performance. This is for, you know, if you're doing a video campaign and you want to reach a certain completion rate, you can do that. Select it here. We're not doing video. Okay, 
that won't uh, come out now. Anyway, we won't save this, so it's okay. Associated, associated creatives. Now, one of the things that I've told you in the other campaigns is to first set up the creatives, and we will do that. However, since this campaign is not live or anything, I'm going to do that on the second half. But definitely, you always want to you always want to set up your creatives first and your pixels. And I'll show you how, how to do that here as well once we run through this uh, campaign setup. But if we had set it up, this is where you would see that um, creative. Reporting labels, again, trafficker, sales rep, if you have that. Commissions, again, if you have any fees associated with this campaign, you know, like uh, anything basically that goes to the third party, put it there so it can come out in your reporting. And finally, comments. Okay. Let's cancel out of here. I need to cancel everything this line on. Yes. <clears throat> okay. And now for the, I guess, final step in a campaign um, setup with AppNexus is the, the campaign level. So we click on campaigns. And... Um, Excuse me. Right, the campaign that belongs to this line item. Exactly. So, we have this campaign here. Obviously, it's paused because there's no creatives associated with it. I didn't want to upload creatives, even though it's a, um, even though it's a test campaign, because um, AppNexus has a pretty unique auditing system for creatives that you'll see here in a moment. All right, so the campaign is where we can get down to the most amount of details that we need in order to run. The name, the flight dates, okay, media costs, so our budget, as we said, was 50 bucks, and um, type of inventory, buy direct inventory, Enable road blocking. Road blocking um, is something where if you want to uh, um, appear uh, and basically bid on bid on all the available impressions on a single page, in order for you to appear, uh, your banner you know appears on, on all the available ad slots in that page. You can do that. I don't usually do that um, unless you're maybe you're running a branding campaign or something like that. Okay. Now we go down to the targeting part, and here there's an uh, um, an option on top to select a apply a template. Okay, we haven't set up a template for this one, and I don't want to use any of the ones I've got here because they are from other campaigns. But <clears throat> so if if for example you've run another campaign that has been really successful with a specific um, parameters for targeting, you may want to create a template and then you can use that template in other in other campaigns okay again device type okay supply type just leave it on default remember that first option we we mentioned in the uh, insertion order level serve only on AppNexus spend protection inventory this was I think one of the the things they implemented um, back when they basically cleaned up a lot of their their inventory this was one of the the things the measures they took uh, we can select here serve only on AppNexus reviewed inventory I mean there's a lot of different options serve only on trusted you know seller reviewed unreviewed inventory the more things you select I guess in a way the more your your inventory is limited but this is something that is um, there's no real I guess best practice it's it's going to depend heavily on on a per campaign basis and testing so uh, I would leave your options as open as possible and just keep an eye on, on the campaign from there or you can serve on any inventory which is um, you know, it would give you the most amount of, of inventory available. Here, I had selected previously in um, a, a, camp, a category, 
So here's where you can select category, universal categories. There's a ton of, of different things. Um, you know, your business, education, finance, food. This is kind of like your de facto uh, categories that you can pick. If you want to kind of target broadly, I selected advertising and marketing here. Or you can choose custom categories, which we haven't uh, created any. But if they you had, they would appear here. Direct inventory are your, um, you know, kind of your 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 private deals that you've you've set up previously. Okay. Placement groups. Some of the you know other other deals that you've done. Third party inventory. We didn't we hadn't selected third party uh, in the line item level, so it does not give us the option uh, for this campaign. But if it does, if we had, it would be right here. Domain lists, if you want to target specific um, domains, include or exclude. Okay. Actually, here's where you can enter specific domains. Remember, if you pick a specific domain to run on, it will only run on that publisher and it will disregard everything else so be careful if you're picking domains I would set up a specific uh, line item and campaign if you want to target specific domains because otherwise it won't it won't it will it will only run on on the domains that you choose here app lists okay you can you know put a um, any any lists that you had created of apps if you want specific apps you can uh, put the IDs here and in the wiki it tells you how to select the app ID and essentially it tells you to go to the App Store and look at the um, I believe the URL of the app you're in and that ID that is that's there you can put it here and um, it will only run on on those apps again it works the same way as the domain uh, selection and it will if you put a specific app here it will only run on that app then finally there's a um, summary tab here we only selected one so but you can see everything that you've done here and um, just kind of review again the key value if we wanted to target you know 50 specific um, geo locations without having to uh, set up 50 specific campaigns this is where you would you know add that group geography was we said at the line item level before this United States and if you're only something smart to do is at the insertion order level if you're only if you're only running in one country is to do that in case um, you don't want to run into into issues uh, later where you pick the wrong country or no country at all and wonder why your campaign isn't active and running uh, video we're not doing video in this case but here if you are you can pick um, positions specific playback methods you know autoplay on etc etc uh, obviously choosing any will give you the most amount of inventory um, here for example specific width but we're not doing a uh, video so it's not really relevant right now uh, segments so segments are any sort of um, actually here's where you can put third-party segments okay you can create a group and um, also, I believe here's where you can add um, segments from your own uh, the your own segments. So, for example, had you created a um, a segment that had uh, visited your homepage, you can add them here. I believe. Frequency, we already determined um, frequency in the line item level. 
we said three per impressions per user per day. Day part, um, anytime. Although if you're running a, let's say a prospecting campaign or a kind of a branding campaign, usually you want to uh, run from uh, 6 a.m. up to midnight and every day okay but we'll just leave it as any for right now system again all those options we had mentioned previously are here again at the campaign level to choose page properties if you want to um, do let's say above the fold which is a kind of a popular thing to do if you want to increase the click-through rate for campaigns that are still or excuse me clients that are still st stuck on that um, very prehistoric kind of metric and doing above the fold usually had increased the uh, click-through rate and also viewability query strings we're not doing any query strings but query string is um, it's very similar to kind of um, segmenting and choosing uh, specific uh, segments. So I've, I have not used them yet. It could be a, a good um, good idea to look into that further. If and when I do, I will definitely post that. Demographics. I don't I don't recommend choosing any any demographics. Uh, first of all, it's kind of a really antiquated way of choosing uh, your target. Uh, the whole reason why programmatic was created was to be able to choose, you know, specific audiences and not um, focus on, let's say, a, um, you know, a vast demographic like age or, or gender. So we always want to leave demographics as um, any age, any gender. And now we have one uh, here that's kind of interesting I have not used I am actually wanting to do it but essentially if you're running against another uh, similar campaign this is to a B test okay and it allows you to have a, a control group which is pretty interesting uh, targeting template remember let so let's say we we had run this campaign and our selections here were uh, very effective so we want to keep this as a template. We can go ahead and choose this as a template, leave, you know, give it a name, and then that way we can use in any other um, advertiser or campaign in the future. Associated creatives, we don't have any, but if we did, we would select them here and add them. We'll run real quickly. On how to set up creatives uh, in AppNexus. Serving fees, similar to the commissions. If you have anything that that has a serving fee um, added here, I've never used these options, so uh, I could not really tell you if it's worth it or not to use. And then finally, comments. All right, we'll go ahead and cancel out of here since we already set this up. And let's run real quick to the uh, creatives. Okay. So, for creatives in AppNexus, AppNexus actually does a funny little thing where uh, they charge you a dollar per creative. More if you're in a big hurry to get your creatives approved. All right. So, it has uh, quite a few options here audio. Banner, expandable, high impact, HTML5, interstitial, native skin, video. Let's just go ahead with uh, with a regular banner here. And now, it'll give you these options. Hosted, URL, and um, tag. Hosted means that you're going to be hosting the banner on app nexus essentially you would use this option if you don't have an ad server okay um, a tag so if you have a standard JavaScript tag you would select that and upload um, that tag 
URL uh, similar uh, to the tag. So we'll pick hosted for this one, not flash image. You can select a file and select a test banner just so you can run through and see the, um, the options. Gives you a preview here, which you can also uh, click as soon as you have a um, landing page. Okay. And uh, it should automatically give you the size. If not, you can choose it from there. <clears throat> now, the tracking here is kind of um, optional, especially if you're using, in my case here, a um, kind of like a standard image, static image. Okay, you can test. If you have third-party pixels, you can go here. You can um, put a bunch of stuff here to associate with. Now, here's the uh, here's the funny part. So, audit, uh, it says no audit. Now, you would be tempted to use no audit, but what will happen is then it will only run on inventory that uh, doesn't require creative audit. So, for example, Google AdX, which is one of the bigger um, sources of inventory requires an audit okay you can self audit which gives you a little more uh, availability as far as um, uh, inventory and then you can click you know accept I uh, confirm compliance uh, you know fill these things out the brand etc but ultimately you have to do a platform audit which is to give you the most amount of um, the most amount of the access to the most amount of inventory available, I had actually never seen this, and I thought it was hysterical. Which meaning they charge a uh, dollar if you want a, a you know twenty four hour uh, uh, audit, meaning they'll review your creative within twenty four hours and um, approve it or disapprove it. Or if you want a two-hour audit, they can charge twenty-five dollars and um, do it within two hours. Um, yeah, business days exactly priority. I've actually had to, you know, if you have a good relationship with your um, with your account manager, you can just um, send them the campaign ID and um, and they'll usually approve it for you uh, quickly. So you don't have to spend $25 to do it, which is kind of ridiculous since you're probably already spending, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars on, on their cam on their um, platform. But anyway, I thought that was, I thought that was pretty funny. Anyway, so I'm going to cancel out of here and that's about it. I mean, you upload and um, click uh, audit and you should be good to go. Next, uh, let's go over, let's see, conversion pixels. So if you're doing a CPA campaign, and even if you're not, you should always have a, a conversion pixel of some sort. But it's uh, super easy. Give it the name. Okay. What type of trigger? View, click. Let's say a view. If you want to give it an expiration, so post, view, interval. Um, let's say, I don't know, 30 days. Okay, count one conversion per user, count all conversions per user. This is going to depend on what you're selling, what are you, how your leads are, are are set up, you know, and what your product is essentially. And then next, if we have a piggyback pixel, okay, we can put that here and add it to to our pixel. Okay? Let me just uh, get out of there. And that's about it. It will then export the code, upload it to your site, and there you go. 
Uh, segment pixels. So segments are if you want to create, uh, let's say, a retargeting campaign. You can create, let's say, a home page segment pixel. So these are, let's say, everybody that's visited your home page and you want to retarget. All right. Um, keep user in segment 180 days maximum. Sure, why not? We are going to remarket segments used by. This is basically our name here. And so it, your name should appear here. Test advertiser for remarketing. You save. You can. It will then take you, or you can hit next. It will again take you to the piggyback pixels. If you want to add any other type of pixel on there, okay. Um, here's the pop up. And sometimes, sometimes it needs to be done, depending on how your campaign is set up. But usually, I would say no. So once you hit save, when it gives you the advanced option, it's simply a code if you need to add a code to it. Um, so anyway, you click save, it gives you the code, you put that pixel code on your site, and then um, within the campaign, if you set up to, to do a retargeting campaign, you would select this pixel to, to kind of target, okay? And um, I think that's about it. There's a lot of other options here in AppNexus. Um, Third-party pixels. I don't think I've ever used this, uh, to be honest. So um, at least not through here. So I'm, I would have to read up on this and kind of go get back to you on what it is. But it's not. It's not you know, needed to run a campaign. Impression trackers and click trackers are, if you need to give somebody else access to that information or you're running, um, or you're running, uh, oh, actually here I had opened the other page and here's what it will tell us on an impression tracker. Served by off platforms, non non App Nexus ad servers. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah, so if you're serving it uh, somewhere else, then that's where you would need to create create the impression in the click trackers. And then users, if you need to add users to the platform, this is where you would do it. For to this campaign, add a user. And then the reporting tab down here. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, if you've seen any sort of um, reporting platform, usually the de facto or the default is the analytics report. Okay, but you also have um, other other type of uh, reports that you can look at. The range you can do everything from current hour to custom interval. If you want to break it down by hour, day, month, time zone, and then the metrics. Okay, these are kind of like the standard metrics, but you can choose a bunch more if you want to see, um, you know, if you want to see other other metrics for your campaign. Again, it will all depend on what the objective was uh, for the campaign. Filters, so seller type, meaning, um, you know, which if you had some sort of, uh, you know, direct or any sort of how you, how you set up the, the buy. By publisher, usually if you're running a um, private deal, I can tell you that. Placement. There's not a lot of options here because this is an empty, an empty campaign. But um, by line item campaign, I mean, there's a, just a ton of different, different things. Media type. So this will give you what it was if it was banner, video, etc. Size. So this is if you're wanting to see performance by size of the banner 
Anyway, I'm not going to go through all of these because there's there's a ton and there's a, a million different ways you can look at it. Okay. So anyway, that is really um, about it as far as AppNexus. Um, it's it's not the most user friend the user excuse me it's not the most user friendly uh, friendliest uh, platform. Uh, it does have a lot of options that if you know how to work with and basically test, I think can be beneficial. Um, AppNexus, uh, if you if you're not aware, had a sort of a reputation for uh, having a lot of bot traffic years ago. They've cleaned that up significantly. Uh, I would say they're worth giving a shot if you do have access to them. Um, if not, um, you know it, it's it w it's not my first choice, but they're not the last choice either. Oh, actually, I want to show you something really quickly here in network inventory and reporting. If you want to ever find a list of sites that are available programmatically, um, or you need to see what sort of sites are available programmatically, you can go to network inventory and reporting, and it will give you this, uh, this page right here. And... All right, we'll leave this as it is yesterday, and then we'll select, let's say, country. Let's pick the United States. Leave seller as it is, top-level category. Let's choose, you know, if we want to see what sort of sites are available in business and industry. If they have a minimum amount of impressions per day, so let's say greater than 100, so we know they at least have some traffic. And then, so important, an important part of this is in the dimensions, choose domain, okay? And if you're picking different countries, obviously pick country. But, uh, so pick domain, you're going to run the report. And then this report will tell you uh, kind of like the... Um, all the domains that are under this top level category. There's also a, a, a second level category that you can pick, excuse me, uh, if you hit modify report. But anyway, uh, I'll show you that in a minute. So here you can kind of see what's available under the um, business and industry category. LinkedIn, for example. And uh, that's about it. There's not that much. This is just a, a one-day report. If you want to get more, choose more categories and a longer kind of time frame. If you want to see second-level domain, you can pick here, which gets a little more specific. We'll run that report. And usually what will happen if the report is too big, it will um, ask you to export to Excel so you can see everything. So here's kind of like um, the second level category. Let's say jobs within business, directories, yellow pages. Uh, I think it's kind of neat. Sometimes, if especially if you're in an agency, um, some of the account teams or planners may ask you for, um, you know, the sorts of sites available programmatically, even though that's not the purpose of, you know, running programmatic campaigns. The purpose is to reach audiences and not specific media. But anyway, sometimes you just have to do it because the client is asking, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, this report is a, is a neat little report that I use uh, for those purposes sometimes. And um, to be honest, I, I'm not sure. Well, actually, um, other platforms do have it, but um, Media Math, for example, doesn't. And it's something that I wish they would uh, include, and I've actually let them know so hopefully someday they'll add it in anyway that is all for app nexus if you have any questions um, please let me know at the bottom of this lesson or reach out to me thank you so much and good luck